The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. In this edition, I'll be flying into the Great Bear Rainforest region of British Columbia in search of silver salmon on the fly, utilizing dry lines in the shallow, kelp-filled shorelines of Rivers Inlet. Fish in those kelp lines, real tight, little pockets. There they are, right there. The really nice thing about the floating line is because it's floating, you get that gorgeous line drag in the ocean. So when that fish does its about 180, that line just helps you, the, the drag in it. Oh, I don't know. This might be the coolest fishing ever. Unbelievable. This isn't a small fish either. I think that's one of the great things about fly fishing. Oh my, this is just another beautiful fish. See, it isn't, I should correct, it's really not the small coho that are hiding in here. It is the bigger fish. Eight, nine, 10, 15, 17 pound coho. I guess they get older and smarter and where those other smaller coho are out there smash feeding, competing for the bait, the big ones must figure out. You know, I'll just hang here for a while. This is 7-Eleven and the food's gonna be there. Okay, let's get you in. And what's amazing, this is the third fish in three days I've pulled from the same location. So the choice locations that you find, oh man, that's beautiful. Big ambush predatory coho, tight into the kelp. Aren't they beautiful? Wow, aren't they amazing fish? Big northerns in the kelp, unbelievable. You're well behaved. There you go. Saltwater fly fishing. Incredible. We're using just a little sparse clouser. This has been my number one clouser for, for this season. Weighted, red and black, medium eyes. Saltwater hook. You can see the Duncan loop we talk about so much. Give that fly articulation. But you'll notice that leader. Now this line we've been using is quite incredible. We're fishing an XI-3 8 weight which is just beautiful for the battle privilege on these fish. This is a Cortland trout boss. It's called Weight Forward 8. You notice all the leaders you buy now and fly lines have loop-to-loop -loop connections. It makes it so much easier for fly fishing. You don't have to tie those nail knots. This is a tapered leader. The mass of this got about a 25 butt section and the leader tapers down. It's about a 10 foot leader or 12 that I've cut back to about eight so that I can get a little bit more turnover. You see the thick diameter in that line? This being the thicker portion to the thinner portion. I wanna make sure that I'm getting some turnover just to help cast that little bit heavier fly. It's beautiful catching a salmon on a weight forward floating line because it doesn't hinge. 
with a shooting head when that fish takes off and does a different direction. You'll find that the line can hinge and it's much easier for the fish to get off because the weight distribution is on the shooting head. With this weight forward line, there's a real beautiful taper, a weight forward taper on it that the drag, if you can imagine like the arc of that line right now, arcs in the ocean. It doesn't kink in the middle. Target casting, that's what it is. When you're, when you're bass fishing, you're targeting every lily pad or stump. Here, you're targeting every kelp or rock. And then applying the other excitement, it's just like a river. When that tide is pushing one way, the fish will be on one side. When it's pushing the other, the fish is just sitting the other way. With these weight forward lines, they make them with such, um, for distance, accuracy, high flotation, you really wanna make sure you get the full floating head out so that you can cast it. Because it weights the rod, you see? Right about there, that's the weight point. And then you can it just flies out from that point. They've got a longer body of the fly line and uh, they're making them longer, 100 feet. Stay on them, stay on them, stay on them. You gotta be fast on these fish. Look at that line ripping. Oh, you are amazing. Here he goes. Oh, big, beautiful fish, look at that. Dry lines for silvers. Pretty hard to beat. Okay, you've got your bonefish, you've got your tarpon. But this is our silver right here. That's why I love fishing an eight weight as opposed to a nine. Just, you get that classic C bend. Pretty forgiving on big fish. These fish are, they're eating in a big way. I don't even have the stinger hook on today. There's no need for it. They're aggressively eating it. Unbelievable. Everyone has got unique characteristics of the river that they go home to. Just pop the fly. Let this beauty go. for where there it is beautiful sparse clouser we've been through the gamut of colors now we'll cover the floating lines and the type of flies you can use for saltwater fly fishing in the Pacific
I use a good polarized pair of sunglasses. These ones have the interchangeable lenses so that depending on light I can change it from clear. There's a, a rose color and a yellow uh, but they're super light and super clear so you barely feel like you have them on. There's a number of brands on the market that manufacture them and generally they're a little bit more expensive but the interchangeable lenses are fantastic for British Columbia fishing. Saltwater fly fishing I use basically one rod for uh, salmon on the fly and it's an 8 weight. This is a Sage XI3 890-4. It's a number 8 line. I fish my heads on this up to 225 grain. I have to move up to a 9 weight if I'm going to punch 325 and beyond that. This is simply uh, backing, number 30 backing. That is um, building up the arbor on our reel. And the other line that I use what we're doing today is dry line fishing. This is the Cortland Trout Boss. Uh, this has a 65 foot head and that's why you can punch incredible long casts as well as nice roll casts when we were doing today just rolling that into the into the kelp into the tight cover you know and uh, just fantastic and that's a hundred foot line but incredibly smooth distance accuracy flotation and good durability. The other key elements that I absolutely love, when you look at this rod, you can see I'm running short leaders. You'll notice from the fly to the tip, that might be about eight and a half, nine feet. Now all you do is buy a tapered leader in the store, and they're all loop-to-loop -loop connections now, you can see. So you just loop that onto the loop of the fly line itself, and it's all marked on the fly lines when you buy them. Now the leaders, we're not going to be using long 10 and 12 foot leaders. You can purchase leaders in the store. They're typically bonefish leaders, salt water, and they're um, down to 9 feet. So it's 25 pound at the butt section, and you're running about 15 down here at the tippet. Now because you're using short leaders, even on this one I might even cut it back a foot or two. It's just because when we're casting flies with the heavier barbell eyes, we want to make sure that we can cast big flies. So that's why you're using shorter 10 and 9 foot leaders. And once these leaders do last a long time, once we've put on a perfection loop and change the number of flies, it'll be shorter. I just add on 15 and with bigger flies, 20 pound in the suffix fluorocarbon. And that has me covered all day. And that would be the same leader I might fish for a week to give you the indication. That is really all you need for the gear side, the flies. I'm going to keep it to what we're doing today, which is weight forward floating lines for salmon on the fly. These would be my key patterns. This is a real just subsurface pattern. It's an anchovy, it's an umqua pattern that'll work. You can use clousers like this in the blue smaller in the green, about the medium size barbell eyes, and then even down to the aphosid krill once you start moving into longer leaders. But that's really all you need. That is the entire game for dry line fishing for salmon. Wow. Dry lines, inshore salt water. Unbelievable. You're a beauty. Oh yeah. coho. There we go. Silver salmon on dry lines, inshore salt waters. Unbelievable. These are sandy shoals, white. You can see where the bait will pass right over those shoals. Those fish have got uh, safety in that kelp to dart out 
and they've got safety on that side that there's nothing that can predate on them because they never lose that juvenile imprint. All right, let's put a couple on the shoals there, should we? That's the most visible point a bait fish will ever be when it's passing over those shoals. And I want to fish beyond it and those pockets. It's a nice little piece of water. I don't want to miss that. Just drop it in. Now with this new Cortland Trout Boss, in order to cast these new fast shooting distance heads, you do really want to try to roll out the majority of the shooting head. Even at that point, there's still shooting head 65 feet of it. And that's how they're getting their big distance casting lines. So I'll just, that's the whole head out. So to punch it, you could take it just one haul and put the whole line out. Keeping in mind that that 65 foot portion must be nearly out of the tip of the line in order to get that forward punch when you're hauling on your back haul and your forward. So there's the line there. I can still feel the shooting head portion, the weight forward line, but it's just so simple. Once it's out, the whole line just goes out really easy. Oh, oh yeah. I'll take this whole fishing in tight for silvers even further. If you find shady points and kelp, they are literally getting out of the sun. Oh yeah. Wow, all big, all big northerns. goes. If you notice how all these fish are in about the same year class that we're finding in the kelp like that? Very exciting. We're seeing smaller fish bust on bait 100, 200 feet out, but these big bad boys are right in tight. Wow, that's a nice fish. Dry line fishing for silver salmon on the fly. This is as good as it gets. Unbelievable, and I love when you're fishing those shorter nine foot leaders down to a 20 pound tippet that uh, the extra confidence you get in landing these big fish. Wow, incredible buddy, look at that big, Thick northern. Whoa, just perfect. Look at that fly just. Look how thick its back is. Just powerhouses. Well, we've been in Rivers Inlet today. Some of the best saltwater fly fishing grounds you'll find anywhere. This is just, these are all big wild fish. 
Isn't that an incredible fish? Big on bright fish. Saltwater fly fishing for salmon. Unbelievable. Single barbless, little tiny clousers. There we go. That one's pretty shredded. But that's what they're eating. We'll see you, buddy. I hope you've enjoyed a look at the pristine inshore salt waters of the Great Bear Rainforest for salmon on the fly. There is a real sense of accomplishment and excitement fly fishing salt waters with dry lines for salmon, especially when targeting individual salmon waiting to ambush feed in the shallow tight inshore kelp filled bays. I hope we all continue to protect the Great Bear Rainforest region as well as finding more potential British Columbia coastline we can protect that has the unique ecosystems with wild rivers and streams that are still intact and pristine. Imperative for wild salmon to thrive. The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line.